What's up, Night Owl? Steely here back with another video, and today we're talking about Animate Dead. Animate Dead is one of those spells that can really throw off an unprepared DM. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of my opinions on the spell and how you can use it as a player and how you can run it as a dungeon master. Before we get into what makes this spell so difficult to deal with, let's have a look at that spell text. The first paragraph goes over your legal targets. It's got to be a pile of bones or a corpse of a medium or small humanoid creature. If it's a pile of bones, those bones get up and become a skeleton. If it's a corpse, it gets up and becomes a zombie. The next paragraph goes over how to control them. On each of your turns, you can use a bonus action to command the undead you've created. The undead has to be within 60 feet of you, and if you want to give that same command to multiple undead, you can. You decide the action it will take or the movement for its next turn. Or you can give them a general command, which the example they give is guarding a corridor. If you give them no commands, they will simply defend themselves against hostile creatures. And once you give them an order, they will continue to follow it until the task is complete. There is a lot to unpack with this paragraph. And my biggest issue with this spell is that there's just not enough here. This spell deserves an entire chapter, to be honest. But we're going to have a look at it. We're going to discuss why I feel that way. But first, let's move on to that last paragraph. This paragraph talks about how long you get to control it and how to maintain control over your undead. The undead is under your control for 24 hours after which it stops obeying your commands. You can maintain control of the undead you've created by recasting the spell before that 24 hour period. And the very last line of the spell says that you can either use this spell to animate one or you can use the spell to reassert control on four. Upcasting this spell just increases the amount you can animate as well as the amount you can reassert control over. Now there's really not much to misinterpret with that first paragraph, but I will say that Papa Crawford tweeted out that the pile of bones that you animate into a skeleton doesn't have to be complete. However, this next paragraph raises a lot of questions. The biggest, in my opinion, being what is a general command? We can reasonably assume that if you tell your skeleton to pick up that sword, that they will walk over and grab the sword and pick it up. We can assume that if you tell the skeleton to attack that bandit, the bandit will go over there and attack. This is a basic use of the spell. It's kind of the, per the, the point. Where I personally draw the line as a DM is when somebody commands their skeleton to kill a target and they expect that skeleton to continue to attack that target until they die. Now, I think we can all agree that there has to be some limit on what a command is for the skeletons. And unfortunately, the spell doesn't have what that limit is. So as the DM, you're going to have to come up with that. An extreme example of that would be commanding your skeleton to become king. Hardly anyone would expect that skeleton to go raise an army and campaign for a cause and eventually take over a kingdom. That's a little bit unrealistic. So the first thing that a DM is going to have to do once a necromancer starts raising skeletons and zombies is decide what are the limits of a command. And again, I personally don't like the idea of setting the skeletons and zombies to automatically start attacking every turn. I feel like that's a bit of a stretch to the spell, not saying that it's not a general command, go kill that target. That's, that sounds reasonable, but mechanically, it seems a little bit too powerful. I would much rather just have the necromancer spend their bonus action to, to command their skeletons to attack. And you don't necessarily have to pick the same target. I am personally okay with the skeleton spending their, or with the necromancer spending their bonus action to command all of their skeletons to attack different targets. And I realize that's probably a point of contention for some people. But I do still want this class to, to be fun and to still, you know, get their get get the most out of it without being too ridiculous. As a matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, I think general commands should be out of combat things and specific commands could be in combat things. If you want to make that a little easier on yourself. And for all the people that want to dispute that, I know there are many. Keep in mind that the spell text does say that you get to control their action and their movement during its next turn. And that last paragraph talks about reasserting control. You can either spin the spell to reassert control on four or animate a new one. This means that a fifth level necromancer can maintain control over eight undead, realistically. This is over the course of a few days, they animate new skeletons and reassert control over them while recreating more every day. And then in the end, they will end up with eight undead and a single third level spell slot. They could use this spell slot to animate a new undead, but then they would have to spend that whole spell slot to reassert control over one undead, bringing their total to nine. And that could that could be considered a waste of the spell. But if the wizard wants to invest heavily in their numbers, they could have a spell scroll of animate dead. They would only need three, which are 500 gold apiece, according to Xanathar's. That would bring their total to 12 skeletons and they could use all three spell slots to main contr maintain control over all 12 with their three spell slots and they would only need three spell scrolls, 1500 gold. Now this of course depends on the DM's ruling on what happens after the 24 hour period when you lose control of the undead. Do they become hostile? Can you reassert control later? 
that's a question that's up in the air. I personally would say after the 24 hour period, they're just, they're just loose. They're hostile. You can't reassert control. It's not like finding a new body is that difficult. Hopefully you didn't fall in love with that one in particular. Just it, the reason I say that is because the spell itself says that it has to be reasserted within the 24 or before the 24 hour period. With all that out of the way, let's talk about how players can use this spell without being disruptive to the game and how DMs can run it without being overwhelmed. A real quick tip for dungeon masters who are running a necromancer is to give them access to an ooze around fifth level. I personally give my players access to a gray ooze because it's medium size and it's a little more compact. And basically just when the party's out exploring, they'll stumble across a gray ooze in a pit. And if the necromancer is sharp and they think about it, they can, and they come up with a clever way to capture it, they can keep this gray ooze and they can use this to convert bodies to skeletons. So if you have like a fresh corpse and you want a skeleton out of it, you can toss the body in there and collect the bones later. And that can be your skeleton. That way you can actually choose whether they get a zombie or skeleton. And you as the DM can provide this at any time. Doesn't necessarily have to be at fifth level. But an ooze is a really cool companion for an undead to, or for a necromancer to convert their undead between zombie and skeletons. It doesn't necessarily have to follow around the party, but if they can capture it and keep it somewhere, maybe if the player the, the party has a base, they can if they have a they come up with a clever way to capture that ooze, bring it back to the base, they have a means of converting bodies to to skeletons if they like. Necromancers, if you're watching this video, keep an eye out for oozes because they're a great way to convert your bodies over to a pile of bones. The next thing I wanna talk about is proficiencies. What are your skeletons and zombies proficient with? Can they wear armor? Can they wield weapons, etc.? This is entirely up to you as the DM. The monster manual says specifically that monsters are proficient with the weapons that are on their stat block and you as the DM get to decide. This is page eight of the monster manual. You, and the, you as the DM get to decide whether or not you can swap that out. I personally say that zombies are not proficient with armor or weapons. Skeletons are proficient with martial weapons, but not armor. Magic items. Can your undead use them? Most magic items require a command word, and I would say your undead do not have the means to actually use a command word for magic items. Local laws. So how does a city handle you walking around the city streets with your horde of undead? I personally used Waterdeep's code legal to determine that skeletons and zombies are considered disturbing the peace if they are exposed. So if you don't cover up their bones or their rotting flesh, it's considered disturbing the peace, which is a 25 gold fine. If the if the necromancer or whoever's using animate dead covers them up with robes and covers their head with a hood, maybe a wooden mask, something like that, something to just keep the, the bones and the rotting flesh out of the public eye, that's fine. They can walk around how, you know, they can just walk around freely. But if they are exposed, it's considered disturbing the peace, and that's a fine. For the smaller villages, I personally, as a player, would just post my undead outside, helping the guards, just keep and watch, like, around the perimeter, and then let the mayor know when I arrive that they're there and that what they're doing, and ask them if they would prefer some other means or if it's okay if they walk around or, or where I can keep them, something like that. Just communicate with the leadership of the city about what you want them to do with your undead. And then you can leave it up to the DM, and DMs, you can... Kind of think about where you, where you would like the undead to end up. And finally, adventuring with your undead. When you take your undead on adventures and in dungeons with you, it's important to keep in mind that these are background characters. These are basically NPCs. The party is the focal point of the adventure and of the story, and your undead are background characters. As a DM, if a necromancer starts putting their undead in the focal points of the adventure, that maybe they lead the way, they're the first one in the dungeon, the first one in every room, they're in the front of every combat. They pretty much start taking away from everyone else. I start clearing them out with AOE spells, a fireball or a cone of cold is a great way to just clean out the undead. And it's sort of a swat on the wrist. Like if this is how it's going to be, this is what's going to happen sort of thing. But you need to keep those, keep, those are things to keep in mind. Um, look at how your necromancers are using their undead and, and sort of gauge what you're what you're willing to tolerate because if they're up front all the time you can just throw aoe traps if you don't want to deal with them but you don't want to completely take away this really cool class feature because they do still want to play a necromancer so they still they do still want these undead and they want to you know when they want to have them they want to enjoy them you don't want to just take them away completely but you also want to keep them reeled in and this is where things get tricky as a dungeon master. You wouldn't expect your party to reach the entrance to a dungeon and then send all of your undead in to clear the place out, and then you go in and collect the reward. This doesn't make the party the focal point of the adventure. This makes the undead the focal point of the adventure. And this is sort of the what I was, this is sort of an example of what I was referring to. 
If you look at, say, the movie Aladdin, when Jafar sends um, Aladdin into the Cave of Wonder, the movie's about Aladdin going in and going on this adventure, and Jafar is just sending a minion in to go do the work. You would say Jafar is the focal point of that adventure. It's Aladdin going in and doing stuff. I hope that example makes sense. A great way to do this is to just bring a handful of undead with you through a dungeon, through an adventure, and then just keep them sort of around you as bodyguards. You could have like two or two to four undead with you at a time. And then when you get into combat, they just kind of hold the line when anything that wants to attack you, they got to go through the undead first. You could also send them up front to do some damage and just take a few hits. And then once the undead have been dealt with, you can replenish the numbers from the main horde. This way you always have undead with you and you don't have to worry about those big AOEs and it's not disrupt, uh, disruptive to the combat. So pay attention to the amount of time that you spend. The, the big thing would be to spend, to pay attention to the amount of time you spend in combat, controlling your undead. And you, like, you don't wanna bog down the combat with the numbers. As far as balance go, that's not really an issue uh, at least not for me as a DM, if they if they start getting like a something, an upcast burning hands is enough to, you know, any kind of AOE spell, any kind of um, um, area of effect damage is enough to deal with a, with a horde of undead rather quickly, a cone of cold, a fireball, anything like that. So if they start getting overwhelming uh, traps, explosive traps, um, undead, treat undead like they're an expendable resource, like they're like they're an actual resource that you can you can use them to trigger traps and they'll, and, you know, they'll die, things like that. Uh, you don't want, but you don't want to take away from the party. That's the big thing. You don't want to bog down time. And you don't want to, you don't want to outshine the party with your, with your horde. And that's it for the video. This is just a bunch of things that I've learned throughout the years running necromancers and people who enjoy the animate dead spell. And even I personally like the idea of pets. It's always my go-to when I'm playing games like in Diablo, the necromancer, Diablo 2. Diablo 2 Necromancer specifically. Diablo 3, it was the Witch Doctor. Just having those hordes of pets is really fun, but it can also be, if it's not a single player game, that can be really challenging to balance that out. So these are just some, some tips that I've picked up throughout the years running Necromancers and, and dealing with the Animate Dead spell. It's probably one of the most difficult early on uh, spells for, for Dungeon Masters to deal with, especially when, the, when a player wants to get the most out of it, if they're playing like a Necromancer. Uh, wizard subclass. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Animate Dead spell. Let me know if I missed anything. And if you want to be a part of this D&D community, make sure you join the Discord. Link in the description. Come by, ask questions. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.